So here I'm on a lift with a guy that is skiing the same skis that I love, Ilan Ripstick 96, and he seems to know a lot about the, the brand and the model, so take it away. Uh, the Ripstick's a great ski, it's like all mountain. Um, so you can ski hard groomers with it. The newer versions, like your version, yeah. are even stiffer, but still, you know, flexible. So you get into some, some stuff that's real firm and it smooths it all out. You get into powder and it, it floats around and it's a playful ski. So you got yours before they were in mass, mass production? Yeah, they were the next year's model. Um, I know a representative with Elon and I needed new skis, so they were a good price and they become my work skis. I love them. They, they, they've been torn up, but <laughs> they take it and they stay, stay in good condition otherwise for skiing. I noticed that you have Scarpa boots, so you're a telemarker? Yeah, yeah. And you telemark on ripsticks? Yeah, no, telemark's a playful type of ski, and then ripsticks are a playful ski, so it's, it's kind of like a good marriage. So, what do you think of the, of the amphibio technology that's designated left and right? I didn't know what to think, um, but they definitely turn over faster. Um, you still have to ski them, yes. but they, they initiate that edge a lot faster than, I think, truly parallel skis. And what were you skiing before? What was your work pair? Uh, volets. Volets. So I had volet vectors. Oh, volets, yeah, those are rare. And uh, they're nice and light, but they were a little too light for East Coast crud. Um, just you get that real like boilerplate groomer. Uh -huh. um, they were just kind of sliding out on me. I was having a hard time keeping them on edge. Okay. You had a story about how you bought a testing model. Yeah, so I, I needed a new pair of skis to for fun. Uh -huh. and. Uh, a guy I know represents for Elon. He had he called them prototypes, and I was like, I don't know what that means, but that's kind of scary when you're buying something that says prototype. Yeah, you chose to be a guinea pig <laughs> with, with, a, with, with a reputable company. Yeah, a reputable company, and the price was right. Um, you know, they were trying, I think, to get rid of them. They were demo skis for for like pros that were testing them out, um, but they became, from my understanding, the new all black Elons. I see the black and edition. Yeah, they're they have I think it's two carbon rods that go down either side of the ski and it really corrected some of the chatter that you get in the shovel yeah um, they just absorb it and they're stiff but still flexible and playful uh -huh. they are an amazing ski especially cool. for variable east coast terrain and i've skied them out west they're fun and powder too so that's an endorsement <laughs> What is this about for you? What's the role of skiing in your life? What does it do for you? It's a way to enjoy winter, uh -huh. keep exercising. Claiming uh, the season. Yeah, you know, just well, ride the chairlift with random people, uh, hear different people's experiences and stories. Uh, but, you know, you can sit inside and shiver all winter, or you can get out and have fun. So that's what it is for me. Just yeah. get out and enjoy it. What happens to your mind when you go downhill? <laughs> As long as I'm not uh, survival skiing, you know, just kind of, you're in that moment and smiling. You know? Just flowing. Yeah. And you mentioned survival skiing. This is something above my pay grade. I, <laughs> I stay away from, from ungroomed surfaces. So what is survival skiing? This is where you're, you're kind of having to use all the tricks you know to stay upright and in control. And what's your favorite run here at Laurel Mountain? So this is my first time ever at Laurel. Really? And I haven't found one I don't like yet, but I kept ending up on Lower Wildcat, oh, and that man. was that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Skiers right away from the guns. It was nice and grippy. You could get your edges up. Yeah, I I, I consider that a rite of passage. I, I just <laughs> I do it once a season, and then I stay to Innsbruck. Apparently, it wasn't open last weekend, so I picked a good weekend to show up here. You know what? I've been skiing this mountain for the last three years, and this is the first time that every trail is open. I can believe that. It's yeah. been the past few winters have been miserable. So what's what's your home hill? Where do you ski the most? Uh, Whitetail ski resort. 
Oh, I see on the so, outside of the state, huh? Yep, no. it's in South Central PA. It's probably comparable to Seven Springs in terms of the crowd um, and volume of people that show up. So it just kind of, I think, well, yesterday they had a three hour wait on the road to get in the parking lot. So oh, wow. this wow. is much nicer. <laughs> yeah. So when you get on the mountain like this, how long do you go before you take a break? What's I, your typical endurance a, level there? Rule of thumb, if it's a day trip, I try to ski for as long as the drive is. Huh. So I'll be so here four for hours, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you were gonna say something about whitetail. I, I oh. skied there once and, and, and I found it to be kind of hellishly icy. It is. So that mountain faces southeast. The sun catches it in the morning, it softens it up, and then it, it firms back up into a big block of ice. But, but, that's, your, but that's your cup of tea, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, you like your tea frozen. <laughs> by, by default, it's the home mountain. But it's, it's, a, it's a nice mountain. I mean, it's got almost a thousand vertical feet, so you know, it's got a high speed lift, it skis fast, yeah, it but yeah. It teaches you a lot, right? Yeah. yeah. Now I feel like if, if you can ski whitetail at night after a busy weekend, you can... Any parting words to skiers who are still learning? Keep, keep at it. If you're following, you're learning. Gotcha.